Welcome to the Dirty Lazy Girl Podcast. I'm Stephanie Laska, best-selling author and creator of Dirty Lazy Keto. And I'm Tamara Snezik, professor of sociology. We believe there are many paths, often unconventional, to achieve your goals. But we get stuck thinking we have to follow experts and fixed set of rules. Well, as the leader of the Dirty Lazy Keto Facebook support group with over 200,000 members, I see people are hungry for a fresh approach, not just for weight loss, but to help live their very best life. Season two of the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast will provide lifestyle advice, lots of fun support, and practical tips to help you at home. Because you know what? You don't have to be perfect to be successful. Join us. When I was losing 140 pounds, I learned pretty quickly that there is no such thing as a day off from my health. Every decision, every day, it made an impact. It didn't matter if I was sitting at a restaurant or sitting on my butt on the couch. I learned pretty fast that the secret to my losing weight for good was I had to be consistent. Yes, and it's hard to be consistent when you go out to eat, don't you think? Like, for, it is for me, I'll just say that, because I eat a lot better at home when I can control, you know, what's in the portions, but when I go to a restaurant, I, Stephanie, I make really bad choices, I'll admit it, and if I'm going to be totally honest, I, I think it's just, I'm making an excuse, like, eating out is like, oh, well, I couldn't eat well because I'm eating out, like, I just use it as an excuse to, to cheat, really, so I guess I need this episode. <laughs> to help me, you know, eat better when I eat out. Stop the BS. (laughs) I don't think that you're alone. I think we all deal with this. Mm -hmm. And Tamara, I'm headed on a trip tomorrow. Uh, Viva Las Vegas. I'm just saying. What happens in Vegas? (laughs) Well, (laughs) see, that's the thing. It's like I can't make an excuse. See? So this episode, it just couldn't come at a better time for me because I love to travel, Tamara. But I agree with you. Being away from the kitchen, it also makes me feel anxious. Yeah. Now, I did share with our listeners back in episode 15 in season one that when I travel, I carry a huge carry on full of dirty, lazy keto snacks. Yes. And the TSA always laughs at me, (laughs) I'll tell you. But when the snacks are gone, Tamara, or I'm at a restaurant, I Mm. really need to be prepared on what and how to eat. Yes. Especially at Vegas. I mean, that's like buffet land. Uh (laughs) That's a tough one. Cha-ching. I know. So today, we're going to share our top 10 tips for eating healthy in restaurants. But first, let's take a quick break. Well, today's podcast is brought to you by Dirty Lazy Keto. Get started losing weight while breaking the rules. And as promised, listeners, I have spent the last year rewriting and expanding the Dirty Lazy Keto mini guide. The new book is five times the size. It tells the whole story. I mean, the whole story. From what I ate to what I bought at the store, but more specifically, the actual behaviors that I changed, just like we talk about in the podcast, to keep that weight off. So links to order the Dirty Lazy Keto Get Started and details for the free bonus gift are available at DirtyLazyKeto.com forward slash books. Okay, Stephanie, let's get into it. Let's tackle 10 hacks for dirty lazy girls to stay healthy while eating out. What's your first hack? Okay, so this one is what we call snoop. (laughs) So it means go to their website because we're living in like these modern times where almost every restaurant has their menu online. And actually, even if they don't, other people will post their menu online. It can be found. It can. Yeah, and so I do so much better when I look at the menu and I I can really just, without the pressure of having to order or my stomach growling and hunger, you know, when I'm not hungry, I can just look at it and say, okay, here's their menu items that are better choices for me. Um, And you can just even plan, you know, what you see their drinks, everything. So you can actually plan ahead of time and then you feel less anxious about it and the choice is gone and you don't have to make that on the spot difficult decision. And you mentioned uh, people will post it for you. Yes. Like on Yelp, for example. A lot of people take pictures of the menu. Yes. Yeah. And you can always call them and get old school. You can. You can. And ask them questions about yeah. the menu if 
that's not something you can find or you're not savvy enough to find it online. Yeah, because sometimes their menu description, it's not clear whether, it, like if you're trying to avoid carbs, it's not clear whether they have a carb in it or not. And you can actually call and say, hey, I'm not, that, Say, yeah. do you make flour in that sauce or yeah. whatever? Yeah, do you put sugar in your barbecue sauce mm-hmm. or whatever it is? Yeah, I, so you can look there or find those things being written about actually on yeah. restaurants. Well, I know too with fast food, um, that was something I struggled with because I would be in the drive through line, Tamara, yeah. trying to pull up their menu on the yes. website and I couldn't get my internet to work fast enough yeah. or whatever. And I'd panic and order something like bad for me. Yes. So that yes. is why my husband and I did write the Dirty Lazy Keto Fast yeah. Food Guide, yes. 10 Carbs or Less. Yes. It has 35 restaurants, shameless plug. Yeah, um, but, but Snoop honestly, there. it's 35 restaurants of everything yeah. you can order. Yes. For fast food. That is a place to check it out. So if you need time. help, that's already in a book for yeah. you. Yeah. Anyway. Perfect. So there's no excuse for not looking ahead of time. Nope. Okay, but what uh, what we can do after that is speak up once we're there. Okay, I, let's, yeah. I call this the M <laughs> approach. M. <laughs> so, um, what should we do? You should speak up. Yeah. Ask questions. Like, you know, if it's not clear on the menu, say, does it have this item in it? And tell them what you need. Yeah. Sometimes instead of confusing the waiter, yeah. I just tell them. I want that fish without sauce. Yeah. yeah. I don't ask, can you do it? Yeah. I say, this is what I want. Yeah. In fact, I did that the other day. I was trying to order salad, and I was like, okay, I don't want the croutons, and then I don't want this. And then finally I just said, look, I just, I'm avoiding carbs. And they're like, oh, okay, I'll just have it without this, that, that, that. And I'm like, oh, why didn't I just say that in you the just first place? got all assertive yeah, with yourself? Yeah, they're, they're actually, people are used to those special diets, either you know, gluten-free or vegan. They're actually, these waiters and their so food servers, I guess what we call them, food servers are used to those questions. Well, you know what I like about your example, Tamara, mm-hmm. is that you didn't apologize. No, that's, that's our third tip. Yes. You know, order and don't make, don't, it's their job. Like, I always think, oh, I'm causing them so much trouble. They have to go ask the chef something or whatever. No, it's their job. Uh-uh. And imagine, you know, I had a talk with a friend of mine whose daughter had some kind of issue. So she would be very vigilant about asking for her needs because it was her daughter's health, like a peanut allergy or whatever. You know, it was like a life or death. So she spoke up and she did not apologize. No. But I find that with our own health, we get all nervous and wishy-washy and like apologetic. Like I'm troubling them. (laughs) But you're paying for it, right? You're paying them. Your food. Yes. You should get it the way you want. And that's, I think, too, I feel like... I feel like sometimes I shouldn't modify it. Like it's if it's written on the menu, it's in stone, and nothing's in stone. Nothing actually. is. And if it is, they can tell you, okay, we can't modify that, and they'll give you another suggestion. Good like, point. Yeah. So don't be afraid. I need that advice because I'm one of those people who, you know, I say no bun, and then it comes with a bun, and I don't send it back. Mm-hmm. You say no. I ordered that. You take you your know. damn bun back to the kitchen. <laughs> Get rid of that bun, woman. I know. Exactly. (laughs) Well, you know what that really, I mean, it's kind of a deeper issue because sometimes we want the bun. And if it magically shows up with the bun, we're like, oh, I have to eat it. It's It's, on my plate. It's not my fault. It can go either way. I definitely do that when I eat out. We all do that with fries. Oh, I didn't order the fries. And they'll be like, you can keep them. And I'm like. Okay. Yeah. And I'll just have two. And then you put them in the middle of the table, and then they disappear. <laughs> and then you've snarfed the yeah, whole so thing. so we know. Don't apologize. Yeah. Send that crap back. Yeah. Well, Tamara, sometimes I just get, and you know, I'm a rebel, so I do think <laughs> outside the box. And I've been known to just go off-roading when it comes to my order. Why not? And Bill gets mad, my husband. He's yeah. like, that's expensive. Yeah. But sometimes I'll just get, like, two art, um, two appetizers for dinner yeah. instead of, you know, yeah. an entree. Or Why not? I just get what I want. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I did that the other night. I got a, it was like a side salad, but then I had them add meat to it. Why not? And so I made my own little, like, salad meal. Mm-hmm. You know. You thought outside the box. Exactly. Like, why not? You're paying for it. Yeah. Um, and this is a related hack. My next one is to go off script. Mm -hmm. So you actually can order things that aren't on the menu. I've learned that. You sure can. I mean, they have things back there or for other dishes that they can borrow to use for for you. Yeah. So why not? Or sometimes they'll even make something special just for you. You just have to ask. 
Absolutely. Yeah. I was at a like a award ceremony thing the mm-hmm. other day, and everybody <clears throat> they brought out just a standard dessert for yeah. everybody, like a big chocolate pie or whatever yeah. cake. And I didn't want it, obviously. So I asked the waiter, "Could I just have a side of berries?" Because there were already berries on the oh. the pie or cake that everybody else was eating. That's brilliant. And it was a big catered event, mm-hmm. and I knew they had them, so I just said, "Hey, can I just have some berries or and nothing did they at do all?" It? Yes. Wow. They brought it out, and everybody was so jealous. Yeah, they're, they're like, like, "I want that." Yeah. I'm like, "Oh, sorry, you can't have it. It's special." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a great idea. It's so, and again, the worst thing I can do is say no. They could say no. Yeah, and I'd be fine with that. Yeah. I didn't want chocolate stuff. But. Yeah. Well, um, another another thing you can think about is portion strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, this one's hard because you only need this in Vegas. <laughs> Because <clears throat> at buffets, it's especially difficult because, you know, it's unlimited, massive quantities of food, you know, or even just some restaurants, you know, they just give you huge portions. So I think the best way to combat that is just make a plan, like decide how much am I going to eat? Yeah. Well, speaking of buffets, yeah. my personal strategy, which is somewhat embarrassing, <laughs> but one of my friends told me once you pass the salads, you never go back. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. Because it's true. Like, as soon as you get into the good stuff, you don't go backwards. No. So my little technique is I always say I have to have a full plate of salad and finish it, not Mm. just a couple bites, but I have to eat the whole plate, a good-sized plate, not the little plate, and then I can move on to the other food. That's a great strategy. I think also, too, and this goes with going off script, is that you can ask for... um, a half portion or you can ask to split a portion. I've been doing more of that mm-hmm. lately and I figure, but my fear is like, well, what if I'm still hungry eating like the kids portion? Like I've ordered kids portions yeah, you before. Can do that too. Yeah. Like give me the kids portion and they'll say, oh, or the senior portion cause they're smaller mm-hmm. or lunch size. Yeah. And so, but then of course I'm like, Oh, but I'll still be hungry. And I tell myself, if you're still hungry, you can order something you else. You can order more. And usually I don't. Like, I get it. I'm like, oh, no, actually, that's pretty fi- more filling than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. So you um, can get creative. I've seen people, too, order, like, the regular meal, but ask for half of it to be put in a to-go container. I've seen that, too. And we too. still have it on the table if you still want it. Yeah. But it's a little bit, you know, separated. Yeah. yeah. Before and you even start. I think that's a, a great strategy. But do something that works for you. Like, don't try to just... Yeah. Yeah. I, I I heard what you were saying about you don't want to feel deprived and bitter yes. and angry and resentful because yes. that's yes. important. So finding a strategy that makes you yeah. feel like you're not missing out exactly. is really the key. Yes. While also kind of just keeping your portions yeah. mindful of your mindful. portion. Yeah. So that means thinking about it before mm-hmm. and saying, how much do I want to eat and how much am I going to allow myself to eat and how what's the best way to get that Yes. without overeating? Mm-hmm. Because we all know yeah. restaurants have larger portions, and that's why we all like to go out to eat. Yes. Let's be honest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't yes. lie to yourself. Yes. Well, I do have a few. I know sometimes when you're at a restaurant and you're ordering off the menu, it can be overwhelming. I feel anxious when there's a lot of people around and I get stressed. I don't have my glasses on. I can't see the menu. Yeah. (laughs) Or it's like too many choices and I get tempted. Yeah. So I have, I call them my safety foods, Tamara. Oh, that's okay. What are your safety foods? Secret of mine. Well, I have like a little short list that are in my pocket that I can whip out. Yeah. So if I get nervous, like I'm stressed about the meeting that I'm having or the whatever, Mm -hmm. I'll be like, oh, um, Cobb salad. Yeah. Or... Uh, like an omelet. Yeah. Just something are, fast, simple. Yeah. I know it's something I can eat. There's not going to be any special requests. No. I don't have to say, oh, yeah. I want the sauce and the fish and the bit, bit, bit. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just fast and easy. And most restaurants have some version of that. Yeah. That's so, why they're my safety food. Yeah. That's a great <laughs> idea. That's an excellent idea. And I don't always order them, but I like having them. Like yeah. if I'm at a Mexican restaurant and I freak out. Yeah. I'll say fajitas. Yeah, that's my nice. done. Yeah, easy. and then I don't eat the bean, the beans, the rice, or the tortillas. Right, but you always know pretty much every Mexican food. Every Mexican restaurant has fajitas. Yeah, and then I can obviously modify it once it arrives yeah. at the table. But. And that's that could be part of choosing a restaurant in the first place. So if you have some, yep. sometimes you don't have a say, but if you know a restaurant has more of your safety foods, like I like Mexican restaurants for that reason, because uh-huh. you can, ha- you can always have fajitas. Always. And there's Guacamole. always, yeah, there's a lot you mm-hmm. can have there. So you can have a safety restaurant too. That's how I feel about diners. Yeah. 
I can always order an omelet. Yeah. And it's always like a nice greasy omelet full yeah. of <laughs> yeah. eggs and cheese. Yeah. And it's fabulous. And most of them have a make your own omelet option. Always. And yeah. you can just throw in whatever you want. So it's mm-hmm. great. We love safety foods. <laughs> <laughs> That's our excited topic. I know. Well, um, another thing we could do is just redefine treats. So in other words, you don't have to deny yourself treats because, you know, the out will come the dessert menu right um but rather than saying no you can't have dessert or no you can't have this delicious you know yummy treat whatever you define as a treat um you can always redefine that well for me what that looks like yeah like i'm not at all interested in their desserts but for me going out to eat means i get fresh seafood Mm -hmm. because i love (laughs) fish but i don't necessarily cook Mm -hmm. it as often as i like at Mm -hmm. home so for me that's a treat and yeah. I look forward to it, like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, I get to go get fresh mahi mahi or yeah. fresh swordfish or mm-hmm. some kind of exotic fish that I wouldn't mm-hmm. normally cook at home. Yeah, that's great. Well, for for me, what's I a do, treat for you? Well, for you know, one I've used a lot is to order a side of fruit as Ooh, the treat. So that's at, a total treat. Yeah, it's kind of like your berries thing. So you got berries at the whatever function you're at. Same with restaurants. Like I want something sweet to end a meal, and so rather than deny myself, okay, well, what's an ex- you know what's an acceptable thing? And usually they'll have a little fruit dish. They always do. Yeah, and sometimes you can get a little cottage cheese with it, or mm-hmm. you know, just to like bump it up a level. But that's sort of my because it's a lot of work to cut up all that fruit. Yeah. So that's a definite treat. Yeah. So that that's one and you're that still I ordering do. something special for yourself, right? Exactly. And of course, going to a restaurant is a treat in and of itself. It is. And sometimes I'll maybe save some of my carbs for that glass of wine treat. Oh, hello! <laughs> yeah. Get your drink on. Or, well, that's number nine. Oh, okay. There it is. <laughs> I love it. Well, get my drink on. What yeah. I do because obviously we want to order more water, right? Um, and in California or maybe everywhere, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't necessarily bring water anymore yeah. because of the drought or whatever. yeah. So servers now have to wait for you to ask. Did you know that? So I ask. Yeah, yeah. I always get a water, even if yeah. I'm going to have a diet coke or a nice tea. Yeah. But the trick is, I drink it. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> let it sit no, there. you can't just let it sit there. Yeah. And I drink it at the same rate as my Diet Coke. Yeah. So if I get refills on Diet Coke, I have to get a refill of water. Yes. And speak up. Go back to the speak up one. If you like lemon, if you're don't, if you bored with water, ask for lemon or lime or whatever. Mm-hmm. They'll jizz it up for you. They will jizz it? <laughs> jizz it. So if you get your wine like Tamara, yes. also get some water. Yes. And yes, which is great. And that'll um, keep you fuller, you'll eat less, yes. better digestion. Yes, all around, that's a great idea. Well, overall, Tamara, I think the theme of this whole podcast today mm-hmm. about eating out is that you focus really on what's important. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, and just like be mindful, like, you know, what's important to me, and then plan and think about, and then, you know, ahead of time, and then you'll avoid a lot of these mistakes. Mm-hmm. If you just remind yourself, what's the, what's the real important thing to me here? Yes. And, yeah. you know, I, it's a transition. It doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. Um, I do have to consciously put away my phone, Yeah. look up from my plate, and think about enjoying the company yeah. of whomever I'm with. Yeah. Even if it's just myself. Yeah. And enjoying the food. Like yep. slowing down and saying, wow, I got this lovely, you know, meal out at a restaurant. I focus on the experience yeah. of looking around, the people, yeah. the conversation. Yeah. I try to move away from the food, honestly, and yeah. focus more on being with the person, the conversation, mm. um, having a, a night off from my kitchen, from yeah. dishes, yeah. being pampered, yeah. and focus on that part. That's so great. Well, whatever, you know, whatever the enjoyable part of eating out, take the time to make sure you're enjoying it. Because that will make it a healthier way to experience restaurant yes. eating. That's yes. That's our whole point. Rather than coming home and beating yourself up because you ate too much or you ate the things you didn't want to eat. Instead, mm-hmm. you're like, I'm having a great time. I'm enjoying this experience. Mm-hmm. It's great. And if you do mess up, forgive yourself, and by the on. way. Then you go to the self-sabotage episode. Right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, listeners, um, let us know what's helped you eat healthier at restaurants. We would love to hear. Um, you can email us at stephanie at dirtylazyketo.com or via Facebook or Instagram at dirtylazyketo. You can also leave us a voicemail at 802 802- Five eight keto six. That's eight zero two five eight five three eight six six. Your comment or question could be featured in an upcoming episodes. 
Also, listeners, do you have a business you'd like to have advertised on the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast? Get in touch for more information. Well, before we get to our final hacks, I want to share one last break. Um, Earlier in the first break, I hinted about a pre-order bonus gift. And I can't wait to tell you what it is. Um, Listeners for years have been asking me for a copy, a color copy, of the Dirty Lazy Keto Food Pyramid as a visual reminder of what to eat. Well, I have come up with something even better as a gift for you. I will be mailing out free color fridge magnets of the Dirty Lazy Keto Food Pyramid to listeners that pre-order the book. And it's fabulous. I can't wait to see those. So links to pre-order Dirty Lazy Keto Get Started and details for how to redeem the free bonus gift will be available on my website, dirtylazyketo.com forward slash books. Nice. Okay. Let's get to our hacks, Stephanie. Well, I'll go first. Okay. And I may be an old lady. (laughs) It's quite possible. (laughs) Uh, But instead of eating out uh, dinner at restaurants, Tamara... I often opt to go out to lunch instead. Yes, that's very senior citizen. I know, right? (laughs) And it's cheaper. I'm also very cheap. Yeah. Um, But I'm more likely to eat half of my meal because I'm a little bit lazy. Mm -hmm. And I want to save the other half for dinner so I don't have to cook. Then you get, like, the experience two meals eating out. Right? Nice. And it's because I'm cheap and lazy. (laughs) And a side effect is that I'll end up eating less. Yeah. But mainly it's the cheap laziness. Yeah. And if you have the option, you can always pick lunch. Even for a date night, I know that sounds weird. That's what we do because our kids are in school. Yeah. And it costs less for two of us to go out to eat than four. Oh, that's so sneaky. I know. And then we don't tell them. (laughs) Well, my (laughs) hack, I'm definitely stealing from you, Stephanie, from when you used, you used this hack in the Holiday Stress podcast. What I did. Well, you said your hack was to eat before the holiday dinner. (laughs) 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 To eat before you eat. (laughs) And I thought that was great advice. Like, I know it's because that way you don't come in starving. Yep. And you you can make better choices <laughs> when you... And you also come in having, like, usually I'll fill up on veggies. Like, I'll get out my cut-up veggies, see the veggie episode, and then fill up on those. And then I'm not... I don't know. I just make better choices that way. So I think that same hack applies to here when you can. You know, grab some food. Eat on the way to eating. You seriously? That's what I do. <laughs> I'm like, do we sound like total pigs? I don't think so. <laughs> We're very responsible. You know, it's because I think you and I both want to feel satisfied. Like, you know, like we're not having to have tiny portions of stuff. That, oh, it, I'm a big eater. I'm a big eater. And I think mixed, I am not a ladylike eater no. at all. I like to eat a lot. So. And the psychology of it for me, like, yeah. it's I feel deprived when I can't, when I feel like I can't eat a lot. Mm-hmm. So eat before you go. Eat before you go. Yes. Well, listeners, the big message of our eating out episode is that we just want to remind you, eating at a restaurant isn't a hall pass to break all the rules. Um, really, it's about the food being served away from home or pampering yourself or the experience of being with friends, family. I mean, really, ultimately, I hope that you'll choose self-respect off the menu instead of food that you'll regret. Because we want you to be living your best life. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast. And don't forget to visit DirtyLazyKeto.com where you can join the conversation and gain access to all kinds of free content to help you on your Dirty Lazy journey. If you enjoyed today's podcast, consider supporting us by subscribing, rating, and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. Be sure to stay tuned for our next Dirty Lazy Girl podcast where we give you even more tips and support. You don't have to be perfect to be successful. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.